Good morning, I'm Craig DeGrelli. It's Tuesday, November 12th, 2024, and these are your unbiased updates. From a new border czar to an EPA administrator to national security advisor, Team Trump is taking shape. Who's in line for top jobs? And been told by Donald Trump, you're hired. And a big name in business casual, accused of skimping on the ingredients. What shareholders claim happened once customers started speaking out against Chipotle. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, these are today's unbiased updates. This morning, we are getting a clearer picture of what the incoming Trump administration will look like come January. After naming his chief of staff, border czar, and United Nations ambassador, the president-elect continued to fill key roles on Monday as more names surfaced for other important positions. President-elect Trump tapping Stephen Miller as his deputy chief of staff of policy. Miller was a senior advisor during the Trump administration and is a staunch supporter of deporting immigrants who are here illegally. Former New York Congressman Lee Zeldin is Trump's pick for Environmental Protection Agency Administrator. He also ran for governor in 2022. Zeldin writing on X, we will restore U.S. energy dominance, revitalize our auto industry to bring back American jobs, and make the U.S. the global leader of AI. We will do so while protecting access to clean air and water. And then there are the other names who will reportedly be joining the Trump White House. Reports indicate Florida Congressman and retired Army National Guard officer Mike Waltz will be named National Security Advisor. The war veteran will be responsible for briefing the president on important national security issues and coordinating with various agencies. Senator Marco Rubio is reportedly in line for the position of Secretary of State. Once formally announced, the Florida lawmaker would be the first Latino to serve as America's top diplomat. And CNN is reporting this morning that Trump has picked South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem as his next secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Noem would be in charge of overseeing agencies such as Customs and Border Protection, Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, the U.S. Secret Service, and Federal Emergency Management Agency. More roles are expected to be made official in the coming days. From former President Donald Trump to President-elect Donald Trump, a lot has changed in one week, and that has many Americans wondering, what does this mean for his status as a convicted felon? We should find out today. A Manhattan judge is set to issue a ruling on whether to uphold Trump's guilty verdict on 34 criminal charges. In May, a jury found Trump guilty in a scheme to illegally influence the 2016 election by paying a porn actor who claimed she had sex with Trump to keep quiet. Now, Judge Juan Merchant must decide whether to uphold the conviction, order a new trial, or dismiss the indictment entirely. In July, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled presidents have broad immunity for criminal prosecution for official acts, though they did not specify what those acts include. While Trump was a private citizen when the so-called hush money payment was made, he had taken office by the time his then lawyer Michael Cohen was reimbursed for the payment. The judge was set to make the ruling in September, but put it off to avoid any appearance he was trying to sway this year's election. If the verdict in the so-called hush money case is upheld, sentencing is set for November 26th. One week since Election Day, and it's still not clear who will have control of the House of Representatives for the next two years. Right now, Republicans have the edge after David Schweikert was declared the winner of Arizona's first congressional district yesterday. That makes 214 Republican seats to the Democrats' 203. 18 races have yet to be called. The magic number for either party is 218. Of those still undecided races, 11 are considered key to controlling the House, and Republicans currently lead the vote count in eight of them. That puts Republicans within striking distance of controlling both chambers of Congress after the GOP flipped the Senate in last week's election. Democrats did score a win in the Senate yesterday, with Democrat Ruben Gallego defeating Trump ally Carrie Lake in Arizona to become the state's first Latino senator. The Senate race in Pennsylvania remains the only one uncalled, though Republican Dave McCormick does have the slight lead over Democratic incumbent Bob Casey. McCormick has declared victory, and some Republicans are vowing to host him in Washington on Wednesday for orientation. Casey, however, says he wants every vote counted. 
Across the world, New Zealand's Prime Minister formally apologized to the country's parliament Tuesday for the widespread abuse, torture and neglect of hundreds of thousands of children and vulnerable adults in state, foster and faith-based care. It comes after a scathing report was released in July detailing seven decades of, quote, unimaginable abuse, which disproportionately impacted the Maori, New Zealand's indigenous people. Today I stand before you as the representative of not only this government, but of all the governments that have gone before us to offer a formal and unreserved apology for the abuse that you suffered while in state care, churches and other faith-based places. For many of you, it changed the course of your life and for that, the government must take responsibility. The report on the six-year investigation called the findings a national disgrace. And for the first time, New Zealand's government acknowledged the issues. Prime Minister Christopher Luxon says his administration is working on more than two dozen of the 138 recommendations that came from that report. An Indiana jury found 52-year-old Richard Allen guilty of two counts of murder and two counts of felony murder in the death of two teenage girls in 2017. The case made national headlines, becoming known as the Delphi murders, with Allen being arrested in 2022. Five years after investigators found 13-year-old Abigail Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German dead near a trail. The jury spending 19 hours deliberating before coming to the verdict on Monday. The Associated Press reporting Allen could be sentenced to 130 years in prison. He is slated to be sentenced on December 20th. Finally this morning, shoppers these days are aware of the issue of shrinkflation, where packages of grocery items have shrunk in size but not in price. A similar problem arose at the Mexican restaurant chain Chipotle, and now that has led to a lawsuit. Shareholders have sued the restaurant chain after it failed to disclose the number of locations that were cutting portion sizes. In the proposed class action suit filed in California Monday, shareholders claim the chain failed to disclose that customers were unhappy with inconsistent portion sizes of its burrito and burrito bowls saying once customers spoke out on social media and Chipotle had to correct the matter, it hurt the margins, causing the stock price to fall. Shareholders are seeking unspecified damages for anyone who bought into the company between February 8th and October 29th. The suit was filed on the same day Chipotle named interim chief executive officer Scott Boatwright its permanent CEO. I do like the barbacoa. Those are your unbiased updates for Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. For all of us here at Straight Arrow News, I'm Craig DeGrelli. Have a great day.